This is a conference about human trafficking, and at the end of the show, there will be more information for you. Good. I thank you very much for coming together to pledge your commitment to ending all exploitation of women and girls. I commend the mission of Burundi for hosting this event. Women and girls around the world are victims of commercial sexual exploitation, forced and bonded labor, and the early and forced marriages. These violations often occur in the context of human trafficking. Despite a solid legal framework to combat trafficking, we must do more to enhance prevention and promote human rights for victims, including social and economic rights. Ending discrimination against women and girls and promoting their empowerment are essential to reaching our goal of zero exploitation. Trafficking and exploitation are reinforced by attitudes, beliefs and behaviors that discriminate against women and girls. Partnership that include traditional and religious leaders, older women, young girls, men and boys are crucial to ensuring lasting and positive change. I welcome your campaign to focus on grassroots organizations. We must find more innovative and sustainable ways to inform women and girls, particularly those living in rural areas, about their rights and empower them to seek employment, take advantage of education opportunities, and challenge the discrimination and exclusion that put them at, high, at heightened risk of violence and exploitation. Once again, my best wishes for a successful event. Please be assured of my full support in the post. Thank you very much. all of you for being here. I am extremely honored for this opportunity to bring to light to me the most important discussion of our times across the world of human trafficking. The vision of Trafficking in America Task Force is to help eliminate the trafficking of people by providing a culture free of exploitation and slavery where people know their own intrinsic value. Everything we do is now dedicated to addressing cultural issues that are fueling modern slavery. Those root causes that are causing this crime to grow. We can rescue all day long, but if we do not make changes in our own lives and in our own countries and address these issues, then we will keep going in circles. We will not be able to do this. So how do we begin? We must examine the issues like we never have questioned anything before. We must ask why and what first so we can move forward in creating a real method and solutions. So some questions we might ask why are untold millions of men willing to purchase other humans, including children, to gratify unbridled passion? What is fueling this basic human instinct and turn it into such a barbaric evil against one another? Why are consumers willing to buy more and more products as if there were no tomorrow, even after we know those products are made with child and slave labor? Why? What has caused this insatiable thirst for commodities and material possessions when they're not really important at all? Why are families willing to sell their children for money? And what has caused this type of poverty in our world? 
we have to ask that question, why so much wealth and why so much poverty? Why are corporations thirsting for more and more profits on the backs of those that create the products to give them the profits? And what will it take to engage these many millionaires and billionaires to return to society some of the financial resources they've been giving to help us? So when we honestly look at the facts that are contained and the answers why and what, we will then be faced with a new challenge in protecting the rights of humanity. We must delineate between what is healthy and what is not healthy in order to protect us from our own selves. And we must encourage enough to implement those changes, have courage enough to implement those changes laying down our own rights for the benefit of those people among us. Time moves like a pendulum. We move left and we move right. Anytime we address a social issue, we move like a pendulum. And 50 years ago, when the women's rights and women's movements began, that was a good thing. Our hearts were right. But we made a grave, grave mistake. Because we left men out of that discussion. So for 50 years, between men and women rather than to draw us closer in our understanding of how to mutually respect and work together with one another. It became men are bad and women are good. And in this discussion. So I believe that what we're seeing today is a great resentment and hatred that has grown over 50 years in our society as a result of leaving our men out of that discussion. We failed to place an emphasis on the value of all humanity while we were working to liberate the female aspect of the human race, and that was necessary. So we can't continue to talk about having no tolerance level for violence against women and children if we don't include our men and no violence against men. If we're going to stop human trafficking, it will not be because we passed more legislation, though that's valuable. It will not be because we've arrested and locked up more pimps and johns, though that's important. The cycle will only continue because all we're doing is writing legislation and passing law to tell us what's good and what's right and what's not acceptable. We have to find a way to look into the heart of the most vital among us and see the beauty within in an effort to bring restorative justice as opposed to traditional legislative remedies. When our cultures feed on sex and violence as entertainment, we're experiencing the last elements of self-destruction in our countries. And unfortunately, America's entertainment industry has fueled a great deal of this around the world. And I apologize for that. <laughs> From movies to music and pornography, and, and in many ways, these are the vocabularies that have raised our souls and our spirits. All these elements combined are trafficking. This should be at the forefront of our methods to educate the public and overview of our cultures for the past few years and how mass media has affected crime and violence must be included in this education as one of the root causes to define the fruit of human trafficking. Yes. Regarding labor trafficking, there are over 130 products in the world today that we can stop using and therefore, in the meantime, uh, at this moment for one, we can end a lot of the child trafficking that is occurring simply to meet our needs of stuff and by calling corporations accountable for their methods of producing product. One excellent example of what is working in the agricultural industry is that the, of the Coalition of Immokalee Workers in South Florida. The fair food program that they implemented are standards backed up by the market consequences established if they do these, uh, these productions. So, thank you. <laughs>